What's up, everybody? It's good to be back in front of the camera. I've been away for a week. Uh, all the content you guys have been seeing on the channel in the interim has been uh, pre-recorded. I, I think I, the last time I actually filmed something was about two weeks ago. Uh, I did do some editing in between, but I haven't shot anything in about two weeks. So it's good to be looking into this lens, good to be talking to you guys. And I figured I would kick off a new batch of videos that I need to get done this weekend with episode four of Show Me Your Rig. So if you guys are familiar with this video series on my channel, you will know there is no prize for Show Me A Rig. This is for the community to show off the hard work and dedication, creativity that they've put into their builds, and for you guys to maybe get some ideas on what you might want to do with your system next. If you guys have a rig that you want to be considered to be featured on the channel, send it in to this email address. Include as many high quality pictures as you can, along with a description of you, your system, the specs, what you use it for, things like that, and, and any other information you might want me to talk about. But without further ado, we're going to take a look at our first system from Kath, and we're going to do it right after the intro. All right, so let's dive right in. The first system from Kath. Kath writes, my name is Kath from the UK. I just graduated from college not long ago and spent my hard earned money on this build. The build is very performance and functionality focused and is named after my cat, Dusty. Unlike most of the custom loops I've seen that focus mostly on the usage of RGB and hard tubing, I decided to maximize the controlling and monitoring of the system using soft tubing while still maintaining a clean look. Please ignore the blue heat sinks on the motherboard. I know I should have painted them black. Uh, we'll see. We'll see about that one. All right, so this is going to be built in an NZXT Mant, as you guys will see in a second. Uh, it's a 6800K uh, using the ASRock X99E ITX AC motherboard. Now, that motherboard has some quirks, and we're going to take a look at that in a second. Uh, okay, so just moving on, memory, uh, 32 gigs of Corsair uh, LPX DDR4, uh, GTX 1080 Ti with shunt mod, so he's gone for some overvolting here for some extra overclocks. I said he's running the card at 2114, which is really, really good. Uh, power supply, EVGA 750 watts. For storage, he's running one Samsung, one terabyte drive, he's running two 850 EVOs in RAID 0 and running four, wow, he's running four Western Digital, two terabyte, 3.5 inch hard drives in RAID 5. One mounted in the back, three mounted on the bottom compartment with a triple hard drive stack bracket. That is impressive. I don't think he sent me pictures of that. I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, the loop is all EK parts and you will see that we're dealing with a very, very densely populated system here. Uh, so let's bring up some pictures and take a look. All right, so here is the build. Now you can see, obviously, it's an NZXT Manta. I did a build in this case uh, last year. It was a white version with the green custom loop. I really like this case. It's one of the larger mini ITX chassis that you could find, so you can do some nice custom water cooling in it. That being said, it is still small and uh, jamming as much stuff, hey, there's Dusty. Jamming as much stuff into this case as uh, Kath seemed to be able to do is very impressive. I would have liked to see what kind of results we could have gotten, what kind of cooling results without this rear 120. Um, I think that, you know, you're granted you're running a Broadwell e-processor and an over-volted 1080 Ti, so that is gonna generate a good amount of heat but the fact that you included this rear 120 means that everything gets real, real cramped in here real fast. Great use of soft tubing. Uh, this is one of the instances where I would prefer soft tubing to hard. Uh, I did a build in this case with hard tubing and it came out great, but I was not, I did not water cool the GPU there uh, and I wasn't running three separate radiators. So this is getting a little cramped in here and using soft tubing and the way you did especially looks really good. It almost looks like hard tubing because there's no slack between the runs. Um, this bend is very tight and neat. Uh, so it's almost like if you looked at it real quickly, you might think that this is hard tubing. Um, so this is a really, this is one instance where I'd say I prefer soft tubing to hard. 
because just getting all these little uh, these little runs in, I'm sure, would be very difficult using all hard tubing. Uh, but you can see that there's a couple things about this build that, that kind of stand out. Uh, the first being, right off the bat, you know, I know you told me not to mention it, but it's kind of what we have to do here is this blue heatsink. Uh, if you were going for like a blue and red theme, this would be fine, but I don't think you are. You know, especially considering that we have this whole uh, black and red thing going on and your uh, your coolant is red. So the first thing that kind of hits you when you bring up this photo is the big blue splotch in the middle. So that's something to certainly address. The next thing is that there's a 24 pin cable running across the board. And for people that are not familiar with this motherboard, you might think that somehow uh, he inverted it or something along those lines. Uh, this board is oriented this way. I think this is the only mini ITX X99 board and it's oriented this way because it had to be in order to get all the components on here uh, because the socket is so big. So uh, when you have, uh, when you look at this board up top, you have the DIMMs and the 24 pin, and then over here you have the power delivery and the EPS cable. So it's kind of like flipped 90 degrees from what a traditional motherboard might be. And as a result, you end up in this, with a situation where you have to get the 24 pin plugged in up to, on top of the board. Now it does, the Manta has some sufficient cable routing up here, although I, I would assume that if you have it plugged in like this with, it, with the cable going across that you tried, I would hope that you tried routing it from the back and couldn't maybe couldn't get it through the hole. If you're gonna put this much time and effort into this kind of a build, I would recommend maybe taking a Dremel to this hole and enlarging it a little bit. You don't see it because the fans from your radiator are in the way and you'd be able to get the 24 pin through there without having to run it right across the motherboard. Alternatively, you don't have sleeve cables here. What about doing something like getting a set of sleeve cables and running the cables across the board? That is, that's unique. And if you, especially if you run them, uh, you know, 12 wide, it would take up a good swath of space like right this whole area would just be like cables uh, and you could do like some kind of a, a red and black maybe even some silver in there um, color pattern and then it would I, I haven't seen anything like that and it would be you know something that you that's done purposefully and not sloppily that actually might look kind of cool I'd be interested to see what that looked like uh, but if you did that you'd also then hide things like these these are your you know, red and yellow and white and black uh, fan cables. Uh, you'd also probably take some attention away from the front panel USB, which <clears throat> this can be run, um, as I did on my man to build, it can be run underneath the, there's a little space underneath the um, GPU right by the PCIe slot. And you, that way you can run it up through the grommet here and then up underneath and you don't see it, it doesn't cut across the board that way. Um, and that ends up looking a little neater as opposed to having this cable bundled right here. So, <clears throat> clearly a lot of effort has gone into this build. Working in this tight of an area with this much stuff is rough. And I can't say that I've ever done it. Uh, so, props to you. But there are certainly some things that I might change, um, you know, and I maybe in like the refresh of this build, you can address some of those. All right, so let's give Dusty here some scores. For performance, you have a 6800K and a 1080 Ti. We're gonna give this a solid 4.5 in performance. X299 just came out, but the performance gains there are still really yet to be realized. That platform will not be optimized for some time yet. You have basically the best GPU on the market uh, with a Broadwell E chip, and you're doing some serious overclocking here. So yeah, 4.5 on performance. I'm sure this system uh, does really well for you. For continuity, uh, we are going to give this also a 4.5. Uh, those parts are perfectly matched together. I guess if you're doing only gaming, then you know uh, something like a 7700K would be better. Uh, but there, there's nothing wrong with the way you've built this system, and I think everything goes really well. For originality, we're gonna give this a four. Now, four might seem like a rough score for originality for this build, uh, especially considering that this is something that it's clearly very time consuming. But black and red's been done once or twice before, and there's nothing special here. There's no like custom mods or anything. And there's some things that could be improved, so I think four is a fair score uh, for, for originality. 
And then for overall appearance, uh, I'm also gonna give this a four. I think this is a better performing system than it, uh, an appearing system. That doesn't make any sense. I think despite your attempts to merge form and function here, I think this is actually a better performing system than it is a showpiece. Uh, there are certain things here that I would have done a little bit differently. I don't particularly like these EVGA wraps uh, on the fittings. The fittings are nice. I don't know why you wouldn't want to show them off. And uh, you know, I think some custom cabling would would do this this system a world of good. And it almost kind of looks like you got too much going on. I think if you maybe eliminate this radiator back here, it might be a much cleaner look. But then again, you might need the cooling capacity, so that's kind of a toss up. But still, overall, very good scores. Thank you so much for sending it in. And on to the next one. All right, so the next system is sent in by Danny. Danny writes, my name is Danny. I am not sure what format you want for these sorts of emails, but I watch all of your YouTube content and I really enjoy hearing your opinions and watching your build videos. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. It has inspired me to take my old, circa 2012, Sandy Bridge E-based build and bring it into 2017. So a little background on my PC, I first built my rig back in 2012 with what was then considered cutting edge components. The build was based on the new Socket 2011 Sandy Bridge E quad core processor, Core i7-3820 with a Cooler Master Evo, uh, I think it means Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, I paired that with an Asus P9X79 Deluxe motherboard and G-Skill Ripjaws quad channel 32 gigs DDR3-1866. At the time of the build, I had a GTX 680 and 60GB Intel SSD plus 2TB Western Digital Hard Drive. It was in a Corsair Obsidian 650D. Over the last few years, I've upgraded little parts here and there, and this year I finally got a new top-of-the-line video card back in January, which is an EVGA GTX 1080. Uh, I have since then gotten the itch to rebuild my PC, but with a limited budget and no real need to upgrade my CPU, motherboard, and memory, I have kept those core components and upgraded my system around those components for now. Added an AIO cooler, Fantex tempered glass case, some nice LED lighting, and cable management. Here are the results. Okay, so let's take a look at Danny's system. Here it is, nicely up off the carpet uh, on a little riser table. Uh, this is the Fantex P400. I really like this case. I did a client build in this case, and they offer it in several different color varieties, which is really cool. This black and white version is one of my favorites. And uh, you know you can see the color accents here and then on the shroud and it also there's uh, the LED light that it's usually placed down here. Uh, but you can see right off the bat that uh, Danny is not messing around. Everything looks like he took a lot of care in putting it together. Uh, do see some color conflicts right off the bat but that's to do with the older Asus motherboard. And you know, like we ran into in the other build, um, this is something that can be changed, but you know, maybe it's a little more difficult for most people to do. Then, then again, you also have the color accenting on the PCIe slots and the uh, chipset heatsink, so maybe it's just kind of worth it to leave it for now. But taking a look at this, uh, he really did a bang up job with all this cabling. This is, there's like not a lot of room down here to take care of this cable. Um, these cables and he did a great job running them back up and underneath the motherboard and in through uh, some holes in the tray so this is something that I really like to see on uh, on some uh, on submissions is good attention to detail working with what you have these I, this is something that I do with all of my builds is make sure that even the tiny wires that maybe you couldn't see unless you look hard are hidden away the way they should be so Great job in doing that. Uh, I will say that some cable combs would do you a world of good. Uh, this, These are really nice extensions and they go great with your theme, the red uh, dims and the white accents on the case and the radiator and the cooler. They, they do tend to look a little bit sloppy when they're bunched like this, although you know they still maintain like everything is kind of together where it should be. Just tossing some combs in there might neaten it up a, a whole lot I'll say this unless you're going for this kind of look because this is something that some people like they liked it all bunched and a little bit messy so if this is your preference just stick with it because it looks fine but I would I personally would put combs in 
this one up here, uh, I had a little bit of trouble when I was building in this case too because this is such a long route. Uh, but you know that you could kind of swoop this in with some with some combs and make it look kind of neat. But I, there's very very this is going to be like a case in nitpicking, a master class in nitpicking if I if I try to tell tell them what to do here because there's not a whole lot to change. I can say that I would these are in pull right now. If you want the direction of the airflow to be from the front of the chassis in, I would flip this around and put this in, put the uh, fans on the other side of the radiator and put it in push because you don't see, seeing the backs of these fans is not the prettiest, even though yes, they do provide, you know, some light because they're out there LED fans, but you have enough light in here. Uh, and I know Fantex has really good support for uh, LED strips and whatnot. I don't think you need the extra light from these fans and hiding these the back sides of them would be probably probably look a little neater. So I'd flip these fans to the other side of this and hopefully it doesn't bunch your tubing up too much because if you move the radiator in, then obviously this tube is gonna come down a little bit further. So maybe you can angle these a little bit so that it's not so much of an issue. So it doesn't hit the, uh, the GPU or anything. But that would be my suggestion over here. Uh, this CPU cooler, you know, we talked about this a couple episodes ago, I think. This is the, uh, the Deep Cool Captain, I think, Deep Cool Captain 240. And I'm not a huge fan of it, but it actually looks really nice in this build. Uh, it matches uh, everything so far. You know, the white and the black just blends right in. Looks really good. So like I said, there's not a whole lot that I could say that I would recommend changing here. Uh, I do like the way you've built the system. There's not a whole lot custom going on here, so you know I can't say that this is the most complicated build I've ever seen, but it's done right, and a lot of people with the same components or even newer components don't take the time to build it right. So this is done really well, but I want to give it some scores because that's what you guys want. So for performance, we have a 3820 with a GTX 1080, and I wonder if you're running into any bottlenecking. That's um, an older CPU, still on, on the enthusiast platform, still gonna still gonna be fine for you for 95% of things, but you may not be getting your the full frame rate out of that GTX 1080 uh, because you're you know dealing with a chip that's five years old at this point and probably start to show its age a little bit. You also are running on the DDR3 platform. Difference between DDR3 and 4 is not that great. But then again, you know, I would think that if you're looking to do anything with this build, you'd be looking at a platform upgrade. So for performance, I'm going to give this a... That's a tough one. It's going to say a 3.5, um, but I'm sure you're probably getting better than that. Maybe a 4. Let's go with a 4. I like to be generous, I guess. Somewhere between a 3.5 and a 4 for this build. Um, you know, I'm sure it's, like I said, I'm sure it still does really well for you on a daily basis. For continuity. This is where things get a little dicey because you have a brand new GPU and a 5-year-old platform. And some newer cooling components. And I think some older storage devices. So for con continuity gets a little messy here. Uh, I'm going to give you a 3 for continuity and I'm probably pretty sure that you knew that was coming. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with the system. For originality, uh, I'm also going to give you a 3. Uh, there's nothing here that's super uh, custom, but like I said before, it's still really well done. And then we're going to move right up to right on to appearance and I'm going to give you a 4 for appearance. Uh, Keep doing what you're doing here. This is the right way to build a computer. If you ever have any friends that are looking for any examples on how to do it, just show them your system. You did it the right way and you did a great job. All right, so as is the tradition here, I do have an honorable mention and the honorable mention this time comes from James. Now I wanted to read what James wrote to me. It's a little bit longer, um, but uh, you guys will see why I wanted to read it. Good afternoon, Brian. I would like to first introduce myself. My name is James Worley, and I play around on the side with my brand Double Dragon Custom Mods. 
I'm a former US Army soldier, current husband and father of two. My interest started in the world of computers back in 1996 when I attended an after school program in which the purpose was to learn the computer parts and assemble a computer from all the components separately. I know by now you've probably received several submissions for the Show Me Your Rig series, but I wanted to take the opportunity to share with you my latest project, Project Military Tech. This project has special meaning to me as I did this with the help of several companies and their gracious don donations. The purpose was to create a custom designed military themed computer to be raffled off by the local veterans of Foreign Wars or VFW in order to raise money for their color guard. The color guard travels to events, parades, and most importantly performs military honors at funerals. After receiving my discharge from the military to fight for custody of my oldest, I went back to school to finish off my bachelor's and begin a career in the technical field. While attending Radford University, the local VFW post was integral in my transition back into civilian life. The VFW post is like a second family and always went out of their way to help others. Once I had graduated and gained a job as a developer, I chose to pay back the VFW. As computers was my only good skill, Project Military Tech was born. I've attached the final pictures for your use. Please feel free to use any you'd like. Additional pro progress pictures can be found at DD Custom Mods. So, James, first, thank you so much for your service. Um, and it sounds like you are giving back to the organization that has done so much for you. And that is more than I can say for most people. So uh, once again, just thank you so much. So I wanted to feature your build. I wanted to show off what you can do and uh, link everybody over to your social media. So this is Project Military Tech. You can see this is a pretty cool little setup he's got going on with the, uh, I think these are Kronos headphones and uh, Thermaltake Ventus X mouse, I think that is. But you can see this is all custom work and as we go through you can see like this is all custom cut and the front panel all military themed. Uh, this is with all the this stuff lit up. And in here custom backplate, uh, it says we will never forget and uh, Custom sleeve extensions, all within you know, with the color theme, and the uh, Thermal Take Water 3.0 AIO, and uh, there it is from the side. You can see the, uh, the digital camo on the uh, the the EVGA power supply, or maybe this is just on a window. But uh, really great work. Thank you so much, James, for your service. Thank you for your submission. So that is going to do it for episode four of Show Me Your Rig. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in their system to be featured. And if you guys want to get on the next episode, be sure to send in your submission to this email address with all the photos and information you might want me to take a look at. Get subscribed to the channel if you guys are not already because if you didn't know, we're having a giveaway here for a full system. This is an international giveaway at 10,000 subscribers. We are less than a thousand away, moving fast. And once we hit 10K, uh, a video will go live telling you guys how to enter. So thank you for watching. Like this video if you liked it or dislike it if you didn't. And I will see you next time.